my place of work. It was actually Riley's place of work this summer. He came here and worked all summer with me, and that's why he's able to afford some of the things he's able to afford. Yeah. So anyway, we have our heads here. We just finished setting up the first head. Took 25,000 off. Looks really good. So we're gonna video the second head. First thing I noticed is that right on the valve cover rail here, there was a, a pretty healthy ding. So the first thing I did is loaded it in the machine. We took 12,000 off this surface just to just to get rid of that ding, because I thought maybe that was going to be a place to uh, want it to leak oil, maybe. The machine we're going to be using today is our Matsura MX520. It's a true five axis mill, 12,000 RPM spindle. The ultimate, this is the ideal machine if I was going to be doing any five axis porting, which that's what we're not here to do today. That uh, would take quite a healthy investment in tooling and, and programming time and fixturing and so we're just here to, to clean these decks up yeah. and uh, and bring the chamber size down roughly to what the 706 heads were. So, I mean, you can, without measuring the CC of the chambers, you can see we took 25 thousandths off of this head. And just as a reference, you can see from the deck to the to the valve seat there, it's you know, somewhat narrower than, than where it was when we started. So Riley's gonna get this head clamps and we got to pick up a work offset and uh, we'll make some chips all right let's get this loaded up all right so we're just going to uh, dial our existing head surface here let's see what we got we'll zero that and we'll just tram it across the head just using a feeler gauge on the uh, surface table uh, I was able to get a 3,000 feeler gauge in. So, right now we're within about a half a thou. Bring it back here. That surface is lower uh, by about 3,000. back up to zero here. So right now on the machine, and we are clamped down to that valve cover surface, which I just machined. So there should be no influence from my clamping, but it's being that it's clamped down to a machine surface. So yeah, let's uh, we'll call up our tool probe and we'll pick up a work offset and make some chips. Instead of physically touching off the machine, I can tell the probe to find center for me. Should be just I mean that side's flat so oh, it's more for the other two sides yeah the other side I'll go less lower okay so we got our X we're gonna do the same thing for our Y machinists nowadays don't even have to get dirty probed our Z, which is the top surface, so all we have to do is push that button. All right. We're just going to take a little gauge cut here, five thousandths, we'll crank up the feed. And our RPM. This takes like seven minutes to deck that whole surface. So once we're uh, confident that we're hit hitting the whole surface, we'll drop it. Uh, oh, what's that on there? Yeah. A little piece of head gasket or something. 
-hmm. Once we're confident that it's all, uh, we're in the right spot, it's gonna clean up, we'll drop it the 20 thou, and then we'll take a finish cut of five thou at the end. That's a half inch end mill and it's uh, taking three eighths step over, so. We'll see what that looks like when it's done. All right, so a five thousandths cut. Cleaned up entirely. So we're gonna drop it to 20 thousandths now. And then we'll take a five thousandths finish cut. We're back from uh, the machine shop. We picked up Rob and Mike, and we're at the junkyard. We're gonna pull this Gen 4 TBSS, whatever, intake off. Junkyard's the only place that we can meet up. Total lockdown, we're not supposed to see each other otherwise. That's at the junkyard, they said. Junkyard is essential service. That'll solve our uh, intake search quest. So. Mm -hmm. That's good. Just need a throttle number. body now. Back for part three of Riley's winter upgrade video. Uh, hope everyone had a good new year. We had a, we had a good one. Riley got a little sick <laughs> yesterday, but that's okay. So uh, part of the upgrades for Riley's 5.3, we're gonna, we're gonna switch to the uh, TBSS, whatever you call it, intake manifold, which we got a few weeks ago here and we know with the flat hood it's not going to clear but with his uh, new two and a half inch cowl hood we're hoping it's going to clear so before we start pulling the motor and trans out what we're going to do is we'll get this hood off and we'll pull his intake off and rob brought us over a 92 mil throttle body that we can bolt on the intake and because uh, that's probably, I don't know if we're going to end up going with 92 or 85 mil or something like that. But that'll give us a good indication of whether or not we get enough hood clearance. So let's get this hood pulled off and we'll get that intake pulled off. That's good. All right, so I think we've got the clearance we need. We went ahead and just quickly threw on the other hood here. And first thing we were contacting was the... Just a little hold down for the prop rod. Prop rod hold down was contacting the glass hood somewhere around there. So we took that off and it was slightly better. And then it was touching his negative terminal on his battery somewhere here. We found so once we take the battery out we were good so um either we move the battery to the trunk which is possible i don't know or we get a shorter battery or we just grind some of this out here which we'll probably end up doing riley wants to obviously Keep his prop rod, so the same thing here, wherever it was touching, it was touching here, so we might have to grind some of that out. He does want to retain the hood pins, which is, goes through, goes through right there. So we gotta be careful that we don't go too close to that hole, but mm -hmm. should be able to make everything work there. It definitely, we have clearance with the hood to the intake, and then we also threw the throttle body on, we definitely have it's real close right here to the top of the intake elbow. Um, I was thinking of possibly machining a angle type spacer to correct some of that, but I uh, haven't made our mind up yet what we're, if we don't need to, maybe we won't. Just if we did, we could retain our 
our uh, elbow and our 45 degree bend there without having to lengthen any of that. But we'll have to figure that out when we get there. I think we've answered the question on whether or not we can continue on with the hood. And then take you. So, yeah, before we went ahead and painted the hood, obviously we wanted to make sure it was all gonna, mm -hmm. gonna work there. So I guess we can start pulling engine and transmission out. Yeah. Well, you don't sound too excited. A lot of work, but it's not so bad. All right.